Is India fully in sync with the United States on, on Russia? We're going to be we're in consultation with with India today. We haven't resolved that completely. During a news conference held nearly a day after Russia launched a full-fledged war against Ukraine, U.S. President Joe Biden said that we are in consultations with India today. We haven't resolved that completely. Notably, it was President Biden's first news conference since Russia launched a war on its neighboring country, Ukraine, on Thursday. Biden did not clarify, but his quick response to a question at a press conference where he imposed severe new sanctions on Russia over Ukraine brought attention to an unsettling schism between his government and India, a key ally in its attempts to counter China's expanding dominance. Since the crisis between Russia and the United States over Ukraine erupted, India has refrained from taking sides. India's cautious attitude will become increasingly unsustainable. It may be detrimental to India's interests in the long run. According to Russia's defense ministry, the first day of the Ukraine invasion fulfilled all of its objectives, including the destruction of 83 land-based Ukrainian targets. Ukraine's military reported that it had damaged four Russian tanks near Kharkiv, killed 50 soldiers near a village in the Luhansk area, and shot down six Russian jets in the east. Russia dismissed allegations that it had lost planes or armored vehicles. Separatists, supported by Russia, claimed to have shot down two Ukrainian planes. It is worth noting that Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke by phone with Putin about the escalating war. During the call, the Indian Prime Minister underlined his long-held belief that the issues between Russia and the NATO alliance can only be addressed by open and honest engagement. Modi further urged for an immediate end of violence and for all parties to work together to return to the road of diplomatic engagement and diplomacy. Ukraine's envoy Igor Polika requested India's immediate action as the military conflict began yesterday, stating, India is a significant global actor. We are requesting a strong Indian voice. Mr. Polika, who warned that the issue might spiral out of control, called Prime Minister Narendra Modi one of the most powerful, respected, international leaders. You have a special, strategic relationship with Russia. We hope that, if Modi speaks to Putin, he would reply, he stated during a news conference in New Delhi. Alexei Kuprianov, senior research fellow at the Russian Academy of Sciences, put it, for us, Ukraine is the same as Pakistan for India. And so, we are going to have our peaceful Pakistan and pro-Indian Pakistan on our border. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar got phone calls from British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss and the European Union's High Representative for Foreign Affairs Josep Borrell Fontels, both of whom reportedly urged New Delhi to firmly denounce Russia's military attack on Ukraine. New Delhi, on the other hand, maintained its cautious stance. J. Shankar described the situation in Ukraine as grave, but he did not denounce Russia. On Thursday night, Jay Shankar received a phone call from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. During a phone call with External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar, he stressed the need of a robust, unified reaction to Russian aggression. Jay Shankar also stated that he spoke with his Russian colleague, Sergei Lavrov, and that he emphasized that discussion and diplomacy are the best way ahead. India is one of the few countries that has not condemned Russia's move to send soldiers across Ukraine's border. The fact that India and the United States were not on the same page on the Ukraine issue was highlighted during the Quad Foreign Ministers meeting in Melbourne in February. Unlike the United States, Japan and Australia, who all condemned Russia's massing of soldiers along its border with Ukraine, India opted to keep mute. 
the disagreements were severe and could not be addressed at the conference, as evidenced by the fact that Ukraine was not included in the Quad joint statement. India simply noted the increase of tensions between the two European states at the UN emergency meeting and urged all parties to display utmost caution. The Russian charge d'affaires, Roman Babushkin, described India's stance as independent and balanced, while Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi did call on Russian President Vladimir Putin to put a stop to the violence there. With pressure mounting from the Western Bloc led by the United States, this is a test for New Delhi to make a strategic decision, ideals and values, on one side, pragmatism and interests, on the other. India cannot afford to offend Russia, especially because Indian and Chinese forces are still engaged in a border standoff. In the midst of the conflict, Russia has emerged as a crucial diplomatic role. India's connections with the West, led by the United States, are also critical. Along the India-China border, many American platforms have been utilized for reconnaissance and monitoring. These Western strategic allies have also provided winter clothing for 50,000 troops. The fact that New Delhi is sitting on the fence in the Ukrainian war will have an impact on its increasing relations with the United States and other Western nations. India's predicament in the Ukraine war is that it is trapped between two friends, Russia, its long-standing friend and primary military supplier, and the United States, a more recent friend and quad partner, whose help it requires to confront China.